three, two, one, go! Hello indie game fans, while we don't have any particularly massive indie game out this week, there are a number of mid-sized titles of interest, with a number of interesting narrative and action titles to check out in this edition of Indie Gaming This Week. From downtown. Let's begin with Kung Fu Kickball, a multiplayer sports title where you have to literally ring the bell of your opponents. Go! I like the supposed simplicity of this, supporting 1v1 or 2v2 only, with a nice variety of characters and arenas as well. With the assist. There's a 3 button control scheme where they can be used to deliver various combos and moves, and does remind me of the Cartoon Network classic Shaolin Showdown. Double tap. It will be releasing in early access, with the main thing being the testing and robustness of the networking features, but should be fun with friends. Super Bell Ringer. I've had my eye on Voxel Tycoon for a long time, since it's a very chill looking city building management title, where it is all about setting up production chains, mining resources, transporting, processing, and delivering them to customers in order for the city to progress and develop. The last title that got my attention in the space was Rise of Industry, so it's about time that a new player enters the arena. As with most titles in the space, it will be releasing in early access, which is planned for 2 years, so it will be a slow burn, but I love Tycoon games, so it got my attention. I covered the monochrome Ash Walkers in my best upcoming games of the month video, where I'm still impressed with the aesthetic of the survival management title. You lead a party of characters through a post-apocalyptic wasteland, gathering items and making decisions to ensure their survival. There are 34 possible endings in this, so talk about replay value, and will be of interest to management sim fans. A title that I've been looking forward to ever since its Kickstarter campaign is Forgotten Fields, an emotional narrative experience where you play as a struggling author who returns to his hometown taking a literal walk down memory lane before his childhood home is sold off. Of course, with the melancholy of the setup, the dreamy visuals and the soft lighting, it should tap into your emotions and perhaps cause tears to flow and looks like an excellently made introspective experience. Rounding off the top 5 is Emily is away less than 3, the third entry in this narrative series set on a virtual desktop. While the first two entries dealt more with the advent of instant messaging and AIM or MSN Messenger, this entry brings us back to 2008 for better or worse, 
this time taking aim at Facebook, or more accurately, their fake equivalent Facebook. If you're not familiar with the series, it's a very meta title that simulates the internet of the past, and along with that comes the cringe, but some clever commentary as well. Ingenious in design and how nostalgic it is, this should be another excellent entry. A couple of interesting Japanese titles this week, beginning with Saga Frontier Remastered, a revamp of a fan favourite from 1997. While the Saga series did not reach that same critical mass as Final Fantasy, I've heard good things about the series and where better to start than with this. However, if there's one caveat, I'm not too huge a fan of the smooth overlook, but it does add new content like a new main character, so it should be worth a revisit. Next up is the very anime Poison Control, released only on Switch and PS4, and it's an action JRPG that looks pretty alright. There's a bit of a Persona vibe due to the art style, but the action is in real time with some shooter elements as well, we purge poison from souls trapped in hell. Smaller Games of the Week begins with the Steam launch of Bacon May Die, a brawler title which previously released on mobile, where developer Snout Up is certainly worth supporting. An action platformer title that seems to have some momentum behind it is Demon Skin a self-described dark and brutal hack and slash title, but to be honest, I'm not super impressed but something that I'll keep an eye on and I'll let you know if it's any good. The Dread X collections have been horror game anthologies which are short but well-made titles, where this time, The Hunt is specifically focused on first-person shooters and was co-produced by the creator of Dusk, so it's certainly one of interest.
Flying Flogger is a Love Rouses style aerial combat title with an interesting art style and looks like a neat, smaller title. The original Night Squad was a chaotic local multiplayer title for up to 8 players, but the sequel looks to do the same but with touched up graphics and more variety in levels. Just covered Nister Ruins of Disney in my video on upcoming Metroidvania games, and it did surprise me with the launch, where the steampunk entry from a Japanese developer looks like it might have some interesting ideas, but does look a little janky at the same time. Months ago, a large and heavily armed Spanish expedition left the coastal town of Santa Marta. They set towards the mountains deep into the country, lured by the tales of great cities of gold. Nova Mundi is a real-time strategy game where you play as the indigenous people of South America fighting off the Spanish invasion, looking like it could be interesting with the combination of strategy and management elements. There is only one way for the Miska to survive. They must unite against this fierce enemy and strike it down together. Assemble a party of brave explorers and warriors. Journey to the towns of the highlands and persuade their leaders to join their alliance. Face the ever growing menace of the Spanish invasion force in tactical combat. Absolutely love the one bit look of Rogue Sentry, a twin stick shoot em up with some impressive Bullet Hell style gameplay. Sons of Ra has also been on my watch list ever since it was revealed during one of those digital conventions, and as an Egyptian themed 1v1 tower defense game, which is an interesting concept.
While Super Meat Boy Forever might not have taken off in the same way as its predecessor, it finally launches on PlayStation and Xbox, so if you're curious about this, perhaps look into checking it out. I love shooter map titles, so one that got my attention this week is Super Retro Fighter. With some great looking pixel art, awesome action and even local multiplayer support, just like the good old days. A wonderful little action platformer is Tanuki Justice, which gets a Steam version after first launching on Switch a little while back. Yes, yes, the Corpse Man is another roguelite deck builder, but what intrigues me is that it does have a monster taming element where your creatures can evolve and be fully customizable, so at least that's a new twist on things.
One of the best hidden gems of an indie game is The Friends of Ringo Ishikawa, a Japanese high school sim crossed with a beat em up brawler and makes its way to Xbox this week. Finally, The Last Order Dungeons is another great looking one bit game and is an arcade action title where you play as members of The Last Order that has to prevent an impending catastrophe from destroying the world, looking simple but pretty fun. On the other end of Chill is God Strike, a 1v1 boss rush title that looks mighty impressive. Play as the last herald and battle against deadly bosses in some intense looking action. This will have much in common with something like Fury, since it does appear to have a similar amount of bullet health inspiration, so if you love that game, certainly one to check out. There are over 40 unique abilities to unlock, which can be used to create different loadouts and even powerful combos to a solid action title for the week. I mentioned the Dark Side Detective A Fumble in the Dark when covering the best indie games of the month since this developer has gained plenty of legitimacy with the first entry, where the sequel adds 6 more paranormal cases for Hero to solve. I expect fantastic writing and clever puzzles in this, so if you're an old school point and click adventure game fan, this is not to be missed.
I love the rain, so I was already into Rain on Your Parade, a very cutesy title where you play as a rain cloud, having to cause mayhem and mischief by changing the weather. It's a shadow fraud simulator, meaning to take pleasure in another person's misfortune, which seems to be exactly the case here. Certainly a little bit of untitled goose game in this, so for more of that same kind of mischief, this is one to pick up. Finally, a surprise release to me was the action roguelite Nigate Tail, another sleek and stylish action title that looks pretty awesome. This is anime as heck, which is unsurprising since the developers did formerly work in that industry, but a great looking game for sure. The story goes that you play as a young engineer who gets sucked into a strange cloud and awakens in an unknown world, having to fight your way out by defeating bosses. So not exactly the most compelling setup, but that's not the strength of this genre. Rather, the action is where it's at, which looks to be awesome, and since I'm gameplay first, this takes the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos, and I will see you after the jump.